as a mu'min, as a Muslim, as a believer of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. But no matter what you decide to do with your life, this life is that wheel. Whether we acknowledge death or we try to hide from the reality of death, this life, no matter what, it will continue. Whether we remember Hussein or we decide not to associate with Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, the reality is that that life is a blessing from Allah Azza Jal. That life is filled with barakat that life which is lived by the teachings of Ahlul Bayt that life is that life that even though a person might not be successful in this dunya but he has to have yaqeen that on that day when no one will be able to help anyone, that person who has spent his life remembering the tragedies of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, he will be able to intercede for those people that have spent their lives running from the reality from the haqeeqat and azmat of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. We need to pass a message 
especially to our youngsters, that what we have learned over the past 12 days and what we will continue to learn until the 8th of Rabbiul Ab. These ayam, the ayam of Imam Hussein, give us an insight to what is the purpose of our reality. Muharram is not just linked with crying for Hussein, doing matam for Hussein, doing the azadari of Abba Abdullah Hussein. But Muharram affects the person in two ways. Either it affects you physically, yani you spend the next remaining days of ayam e aza doing azadari of Hussein, beating your chest, crying for Hussein. But that only leaves a mark on your body. But that does not affect you in any way what is inside. This body is that reality that once your body is separated from your room, from your soul, there is no value of this body. A person can spend his life, spend money after money trying to fix this body. But if he does not spend one minute thinking about the reality of the soul, then the body will have no use for him when he dies from this dunya. Muharram, the movement of Imam Hussein, fixes us both physically and both spiritually. Muharram shouldn't only leave a mark on your body that you can use on the 12th of Muharram to upload pictures onto social media that I have done Zajeeb, I have done Matam. But Muharram or the mission of Imam Hussein, the movement of Imam Hussein should leave a permanent scar on your roof. You have seen, you live in the same world as I live in. As Shaam e Gharima passes, the 11th of Muharram, people are using images of Zani Zani, of Kama Zani, of Matam, of Pursa, of crying to increase views on their social media. Why did you do Zanji? To show other people? Or did you do Zanji? to give Pursa to Imam Zamana. This time that we have, we should not use it to leave a mark on social media, but we should use the Husseini movement to see what mark it leaves on our soul. Those people that did Zanjeev Zani on the 10th of Muharram. Azeem Ibadat, according to the fiqh of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Our Aqeedah is the Azadari of Imam Hussein is Azeem Ibadat. But any Ibadat leaves a mark on your soul. Allah says in the Quran that those people that pray that fulfill their salah. What does salah do? It moves them away from guna. Ibadat of salah moves you away from sin. If you are reciting salah five times a day, if you are doing overtime in ibadat, if every moment you have, you have the tasbih, and you keep reciting, astaghfirullah, Salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, but still, that is not stopping you 
from doing guna, then that namaz is just having effect on your body. But any ibadat should always hit your heart. Not every person can cry for Hussein. How many people you have seen on the day of Ashura, they are celebrating. They are keeping fuss, celebrating. They are doing weddings. And if someone from that family dies, they stop everything. Even if that grandfather who died at the age of 100, out of his respect, they say, whatever we are today, it is because of him. Because of a sinful person, because of a gunagar, a person can live a thousand years, but if he does not have the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib, then those thousand years do not mean anything. But the Prophet says that one moment spent in the life with the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib is better than giving mountains of gold in the name of Allah Azza wa Yani the vilayat of Ali, the vilayat of Ahlul Bayt holds such an importance in a person's life that all of his a'mal, every minute of his life will be classed as ibadat if he has the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib and la'nat upon even 100 years of his life if he spends it with the books of Ahlul Bayt Your life is only worth anything if it is lived with the vilayat of Ahlul They say what? Out of his respect, whatever we are today, it is because of our grandfather. Muslims have forgotten that today everything that you have in Deen Islam if you pick up a book which says the A to Z of Islam, everything today that you see in Deen Islam, it is due to the sacrifice of Abba Abdullah Hussein. We are not saying come and do Matam with us. We are not saying come and do Zanjir with us. But if you can stop everything, due to the respect of someone who dies in your family, then doesn't Imam Hussein mean anything to the Muslims? Imam Hussein gave a change in society. Imam Hussein gave a change in the view of how people live their lives in this dunya. Imam Hussein gave both a social, a physical and spiritual change in a person's life. But if still people don't want to come to the door of Imam Hussein, then that is their loss. Not the loss of Imam Hussein. As I said on Chand Raj, even if we don't sit here in Imamia mission and remember Abba Abdullah Hussein, Allah has created so many angels for the giriya of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, that yours and my tears are not needed. But if we cry for Hussein, then that means that our hearts are moved. Not every person can cry. Crying is one of the hardest things. You need to understand something, you need to feel something. For tears to run down, flow down these eyes. If we understand Imam Hussein so much that we are crying in the majlis of Imam Hussein, then as soon as we leave these doors, we are the same Husseini 
that was sitting in the majlis of Imam Hussein. We don't change when we leave the doors of the Imam Barga. Our lives should not change when the month of Muharram finishes. But after each Muharram in our life, we should become closer to Aba Abdullah Hussein. Let me give you an example for the youngsters that are finding it hard to understand. If you now close your eyes and you imagine a beautiful garden, a garden filled with flowers, with flowing rivers, with the most beautiful sunsets that you have seen in your lives, as soon as you close your eyes and you imagine this, think about this, that image which comes into your mind stays in your mind. And as soon as you imagine an earthquake in your mind, all of that garden, that beautiful scenery that you have created in one second destroyed. It took you one second to put that image in your mind. It took you one second to destroy that image. But still, whenever you want to recall that image, it will come back into your mind. For you to have a beautiful life, you cannot just imagine. You cannot just imagine and then do all the actions that go against the teachings of Ali ibn Abi Talib. You can imagine that you are a azadar of Aba Abdullah al-Hussein. But as soon as Muharram finishes, you are back to your normal self. For this life to be as beautiful as something which you have imagined in your life, in your mind, takes effort. And that effort is this, that you learn and you follow in the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt. Life is moving very quickly. People are praying every single day for the zahoor of Imam Mahdi. Every single day they are doing dua that Mawla come quickly. Mawla we are tired. Mawla we are struggling. Mawla our life is hard. Mawla our life is surrounded by problems, mushkilat. But we are not willing to change. As a daro, my last majlis in these ayam of Imam Hussein. And I want to leave you with only one message. Don't destroy the last 12 days that you have been remembering Aba Abdullah Hussein. Every day you have been coming. Every day, we cannot hear, but Imam Sajjad has been thanking you. Every day, Imam Sajjad, as you walk in, he has been saying thank you to you. As you have been walking out, Imam Sajjad has been thanking you. That was Adar. You did not see how beautiful Ali Akbar was in Karbala. You did not see how much my father loved Ali Askar. You did not see how beautiful Hazrat Qasim was. You did not see how beautiful Aun and Muhammad were. But still 1400 years later, upon seeing the moon of Muharram, you have been attending Imamia mission. You have been remembering Aba Abdullah al Hussein. You have been crying for the tragedies that fell upon Hussein. Mawla has been thanking you. But why can't we hear the Imam? Because 
we are not fully connected with the Husseini movement. We are more attached to the dunya. If we prioritize everything in our life and in our hearts and our minds, if we put Ahlul Bayt first, then Allah see how your lives will change. And see how you will become better at everything that you do in this dunya. And on this 12th of Muharram, 12 days we have been discussing the dunya and Ahlul Bayt. And I want to narrate a hadith, a saying from our Mawla Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. In which Mawla is talking about the reality of this dunya. Twelve days we have been coming, we have been listening, you have been listening to the English, you have been listening to the Urdu, you have been listening to the Zakarin, all because you want Ma'rafat of Ahlul Bayt. Mawla is telling you the reality of this dunya that we live in. Mawla says that the reality of this dunya is in six things. This dunya ki hakikat che chizu. Six things is the reality of this dunya. And for a person like you and me, these six things mean that we have gained the dunya. The first thing. Mawla says the reality of this dunya is in something that we eat. Some people say that if we have the best food, exotic food, we dunya the Nowadays everything is widely available. But every person classes the world in different categories. Some person's dunya is around just vegetables and dal. Something that we eat. For some people, that dunya is in regards to meat that we eat. Yani every single person's a reality varies according to how much good food he has in his house. If you go into someone's house and he gives you dried fruit, nuts, pistachio, almonds, dried pineapple, dried kiwi, so many things you can get now. You will be sitting there, you will be eating that and you will be thinking, MashaAllah, this person has good money. Because he has given you the expensivest food available. Mawla is saying the reality for some, the dunya is in something that we eat. The second thing Mawla says that for some, reality is in something that we drink. Mawla is going to give you a natija, so please follow. Yes. I will keep repeating, keep nodding your heads. For 12 days I have not said, Mere saad bole, but today, please nod your head so that I know that me coming here, 12 days of Imamiya mission calling me, 12 days that you have learned something, not from me, but from the sayings of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. First thing, reality of the dunya, the world is in something that we eat. eat. The second is reality of this dunya is in something that we drink. drink. Now you see, many people have the expensive drinks. In the English culture, haram drinks value how much money you have. 
But even in us Muslims, nowadays our lives are branded. We live a branded life. Someone who puts a drink in front of you which is unbranded. I don't want to mention any names from the member, but you know. Unbranded, you go to someone's house, you think how cheap is this person? He is giving you unbranded food, unbranded drinks. And if he puts something in front of you which is branded, there are certain drinks that cost more than a hundred pounds. Halal drinks. And in the reality of the dunya for them is in something that we drink. The third thing, Mawla says, reality of the dunya is based upon something that we wear. How many times have you classed people? Someone walks through the door. If he is wearing a cheap wash and wear kapra, you will think that he is normal. But if someone walks in wearing Boski, Karandi, God knows how many names they have of clothes, and he walks in with branded logos over his chest, people look at from his shoes to what he's wearing on his head to figure out if this person is of any value. <laughs> People now class people as if they are wearing expensive stones, expensive rings, they can figure out iske paas paise hain. Yani the reality of the world, according to Mawla, is based upon the third thing in something which they wear. The fourth thing, Mawla says that people class the reality, the hakikat of this dunya in something that you ride. Mawla said this 1400 years ago. Look how the kalam of Ma'asom is valid until Yawmul Qayama. Something that you ride. Somebody drives into the Imam Barra in a Q7 Audi 24 plate Tesla, yeah. people will not say anything to his face, but they will say, Whether he doesn't have the tawfiq to give one penny to Imam your mission, but he will walk in, he will ride in. I am not attacking anyone, please. I am mentioning a point. I don't want people to say afterwards, Ke Sada Shah Sahab ne Mulana Sahab ko kaha tha, is liye Mulana Sahab ne Q7 ka naam liya. Valla mujhe nahi pata. Main ek point de raha hoon. Ke Mulana farmate hai, that person is known, reality of the dunya, haqeeqat of the dunya, is something that he writes. We base our comments on this. The fifth thing, Mawla says, now keep remembering that Mawla said this more than 1400 years ago. And how does it fit into our society? Those people that say the Kalam of Masum does not fit into today's day and world, today's day and age. That culture is old, this culture is new. We are not taking Kalam of those people that became Muslims at the age of 70. But we are taking our deen from that person that before deen was revealed, Ali says that I saw the kainat being created with my own eyes. Do fakhr upon the imam that you have chosen to believe in. Allah says the fifth thing. People put the reality of this dunya in something that they can smell. Those people that have never worn creed, me being one of them. Those people that have never worn the most expensive is perfume. The only reason I know creed because I know it's more than 300 pound a bottle. But those people that have never worn it, when they smell something good, 
they know that this has value. People then class the person. He can be wearing the ripped clothes, but if he is wearing good perfume, they will say that tin so di bottle. Amongst themselves, a reality, shall we? A reality. Again, Imam Bagar only they are not that tin so di bottle rakhis. The reason why I'm saying this is this is the Imam's house. This is your house. If you are not going to look after not just Imam your mission, any house with the nisbat of Abba Abdullah Hussein, it is your responsibility to look after. And in today's day and age, everything works with money. I've not seen that Adil Shah, Sajid Shah, Israr Shah, or the executive committee have trees in the houses. If you've seen that, please tell me before I return, I want to visit that tree. They don't have trees. You, Mu'mineen, you give in the mission of Abba Abdullah, and they spend for you in the mission of Abba Abdullah. You are classed as the helpers of Imam Hussein. Reality of the dunya is in something that you can smell. Final thing Mawla says, people class the reality of the dunya with who they have married. Those that have no jaman children, you are always after not what the Ahima have said, not what the Holy Prophet has said to look when you are getting your children married. Hakikat hai. What do we look for? Pakistan mein kitne plot hai? Yaha UK mein, how many houses do they have? How many cars do they have? Magar bad nasibi ye hai ke ab hum ye bhi check karte hai ke those houses that they have, how many are cashed? Because yeah. mortgage means nothing. Yes. I can have a million pound house in mortgage. Tomorrow if I don't pay it, default. People used to ask, Namaz padta hai? Ahle bayt ko manta hai? Does he do azadari? Does he go to Majlis? Does he do Khatam? Yeah. Yani those basics that Ahlul Bayt have taught us. We used to ask them. Now our reality of the dunya is what? In these things. Khata kya hai? Pita kya hai? Lagata kya hai? Penta kya hai? Yani our reality of the dunya is now changed in such a way. Then Mawla gives an answer. And Mawla explains, and inshallah, as I said, inshallah, finishing this page today, Mawla then explains these six things in which we class the reality of the world. Yani something you eat, something you drink, something you wear, something you ride, something you smell, and something you marry. Then Mawla gives the hakikat of all of these things. Mawla says the highest thing that a person can eat in is this dunya is honey. And honey, the reality of honey is that it is the vomit of bees. Have you ever thought of this? Most expensive that we could eat today. You go into Holland and Barrett's, you can buy honey. That small, over two, three hundred pounds. Mawla says that the best thing that we can eat is honey. And honey is the vomit, the spit of bees. I think when you're going to eat honey now, you will think twice. But Mawla is explaining to us the reality of this dunya. Second thing, Mawla says that the highest drink that we assume is anything, but Mawla says, the best drink for you is water. And water can be contaminated 
with only one bacteria. This virus which is going in Devon, as you have seen on the news. One parasite, the water is no longer drinkable. People are buying water. That's the reality of the dunya. Water, which now we think is the cheapest. Three days you cannot survive without water. Many experiments they have done. A person does not drink water. After seven days he starts to lose his mind. The value of water you feel in Ramadan. That thing which is in front of us every single time holds no value. But when that thing is taken away from us, then we understand the reality. We cannot ever understand the reality of water. Maula says that we class the dunya in something that we drink and water is the best drink that we can have and it can be contaminated with just one parasite. The third thing Maula says, something that we wear, Maula says the best thing that you can wear, that the dunya have classed is silk. Where does silk come from? Silk comes from the worm and it doesn't come from the mouth. Google it. It comes from such a place that if we understand the reality, that thing that we value the most, something that we wear, Mawla is saying the reality is such that it comes from the back end of a worm. Then Mawla says, something that we write, Mawla says those people that value the reality of this dunya in something that they ride on, could be a horse, an animal, a car, a boat, a plane, Mawla says, they are the cause of your death. How many times have you seen someone in a Ferrari? Accident, dead. Moving on, Mawla says something that you smell. Mawla says the best smell is musk. And that comes from the mucus of a gazelle. Mucus from the throat of a gazelle. What we wear with pride, which is known as musk. And the final thing, something that we marry. Mawla says that moving over because there are children, that thing that you value the most in marriage is when both husband and wife come together. Mawla says that is that thing that you use, that if something comes out of that, touches your body, your body becomes nudges. You value your life over those things. The reality of this world is that the more we attach ourselves to this dunya, the more that we come closer to this dunya, the more we will move away from Ahlul Bayt. Zadara, you have been given, you are blessed with this opportunity in Imam Ya Mission. But Alhamdulillah, every single majalis, every single program has been organized for the pleasure of Imam Zaman. This is that reality that before one word before I move on to Musaib is that the reality of dunya is thank those people that make it possible to be successful in this life. And there is no success greater than gaining the ma'rifat of Ahlul Bayt. Here is where you need to thank, and I want to thank on my behalf, the executive committee of Imamia Mission that have given me the opportunity to come and serve Mu'mani 
and to spread the word of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, especially the brothers who are organizing the sound and the cameras, Brother Tayyib and Mubashar, because there are many things in the Idara that people do behind the scenes. I have seen Azim Shah Saab, after when you all leave, emptying the bins, cleaning the toilets, executive committee in front of you, Kirmani Saab, Bukhari Saab, Sadiq Shah Saab, all the executive committee members, Taki, Shah, Taki Saab, all of them, when you leave, they are here serving the mission of Ahlul Bayt, serving you, vacuuming, cleaning. All of these people are not doing it for you, but are doing it for Imam Zaman. And you in return should try your best to make sure that everything that you can do to make this mission uh, run smoother, inshallah, may Allah Azza bless us with the ma'rifat of Ahlul Bayt. Only if people understood the ma'rifat of Ahlul Bayt, then the daughters of Rasulullah after Karbala wouldn't have been paraded from city to city. As a just to one jumla of Masail. Sayyida Zainab, when she left Medina, in the time of Amir al muminin as she was leaving, Amir al muminin ordered his sons to go and bring Zainab with the utmost respect to Kufa. As a before Bibi Zainab even entered Kufa, Hazrat Abbas, three days before, started to announce, O oh, children of Kufa, do not come out on so and so date because uh, Sayyida Zainab is coming from Medina. He would go to every street, to every market, and he would say, Oh, people, do not come out. The daughter of Ali Murtaza, the daughter of Fatima to Zahra, is coming to Kufa. Oh, children, do not come out to play. But Aladaro as Zainab entered, Imam Ali says, Oh, Zainab, this this is the central market of Kufa. This is so and so street. Bibi Zainab begins to cry. She says, Oh Father Ali, people tell their sons of these places. Oh Father Ali, why are you telling Zainab this? Imam Ali begins to cry. He says, Oh Zainab, a time will come when you will enter Kufa with your hands tied behind your neck. As a daro, that date came on the 12th of Muharram when the family of Rasulullah, when they entered the Kufa, the daughters of Ali, their hands were tied behind their necks. People came, they said throw stones at Zainab. She is the daughter of Ali and <laughs> For the sake of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, we pray that you accept our ibadat in the Giriya of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Ya Ilahi, bless Imam your mission, the executive committee, the Mu'mineen that have been helping to make these previous 12 days possible. Ya Ilahi, bless them with the ma'rifat of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Ya Ilahi, give shifa to all those people that are ill. Give us ma'rifat of Imam Zamana. Allahumma ajil levaliyek al-faraj. Allahumma ajil levaliyek al-faraj. Allahumma ajil levaliyek al-faraj. Rabbi salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Birahmatik ya arham ar rahimin Three times with the loudest of your voices, loudest salawat. Allah.